Well, guys, someone's still cashing the big farmer checks based on this article we've got here from the Daily Mail. In it, we have some so-called Dr. Michael Mosley that turns out to be a long-time BBC presenter who attended medical school and decided upon completion not to be a doctor and instead to be a media hack for the Bolshevik Broadcasting Corporation. No, he's not worked as a doctor after graduating decades ago, yet here he is as a doctor, giving us medical advice not based on reality. Instead, it's based on the agenda he's balls deep in and maybe getting paid to push. Naturally, he starts off by calling it a long and deadly battle with bat flu, but to me it seems like a long battle against an evil and corrupt enterprise lying to us in order to further its own agenda. Boris Johnson and the powers that be didn't think it was very deadly in June 2020 just after Boris apparently went into hospital with bat flu and nearly died. So, if the party gate scandal is to be believed, they certainly didn't think it was deadly during the December 2020 parties or during the Eco Love Fest COP26. Shit, you got the G7, the football and various other things that all of these tosspots attended without no worries. Plus, his claim of deadly really don't match up to the Office of National Statistics that shows it's killed less than 18,000 people in two years, or less than 10,000 in two years, depending on which freedom of information request you look at. This is clearly not something you will see on the BBC, likely until the narrative completely fails, but even then, the BBC might ignore it since honest reporting on it is not what they do. In fact, it's a bit like this to ear because this entire article is propaganda and nothing more, which explains why it works for the BBC, I guess. In it, he tries to make out like Omicron is some great danger to the unjab, despite South African doctors stating it wasn't back in November. She literally said jabbed or unjabbed, the symptoms are mild. Um, there's no, really no need. And these patients um, recover within about five days. Whether you are a child, whether you are 80 years of age, whether you've been vaccinated, whether you have not been vaccinated, whether you have suff suffer from mild diseases, other comorbidities, this is what we see. This is the real life. This is the real experience. Of course, that don't matter to him because here we have him saying, and I quote, the picture is different if you haven't been vaccinated, according to recent studies in the US and Switzerland. If you're vaccinated and catch COVID, you're at least 60 times more likely to get sick and die than if you're triple jabbed. Now, even if that's true, it is of course ignoring the fact that even 60 times more likely means very little when the chances of dying start at next to zero anyway. He goes on, the vaccinated are also far less likely to get symptoms of long COVID, such as a loss of taste and smell or prolonged periods of tiredness research shows. Ah, long COVID, or as I like to call it, long sick note. It's funny how it often seems to be middle class lovies working for the public sector who appear to suffer with this long sick note condition. I myself have not heard of many construction workers or people like that suffering from it, have you? Now, while promoting the jab, he talks about his own triple jab friends who all caught bat flu and how it's great without realising how ridiculous that sounds, but then again, the whole article is pretty much that. Of course, its main aim is to try and vilify the unjabbed both working in hospitals and in the general population, but this bit here really takes the cake for me. He writes, and I quote, A close friend of mine's father recently died after getting COVID while in hospital being treated for heart failure, and though I can't prove it, odds are high he got it from an unvaccinated patient or member of staff. So here he claims his friend's dad died with COVID despite being in hospital for heart failure and that he thinks the odds are high that an unjabbed patient or staff member gave it to him. Of course, how he came to that conclusion I will never know, but since the majority of NHS staff were double or triple jabbed, I would say the odds are actually against it. And I mean, the government's own data shows that 68% of bat flu hospitalizations are double or triple jabbed, and for cases it's more like 78%. So please tell me how the odds are it was an unjabbed patient or staff, because to me the odds go the other way. Now he then goes on promoting more medical treatments that in fact makes me think this article should have a disclaimer reading sponsored by Pfizer or something across the top. And actually, as it goes, this is not an opinion piece. From what I can tell, this is literally an article from the Daily Mail, meaning an editorialised, paid-for and commissioned piece of propaganda. This is why I'm here calling it out for the blatant bullshit that it is. In fact, it's almost on par with Dr. Shillery Jones and his paid-for propaganda that gives us gems like this. Uh, and in theory, if you go swimming in the sea, you should be wearing a mask. 
In fact, if this tip Michael Mosley was on TV, I'm sure he would say something similar given the chance. They're all singing from the same hymn sheet after all. 